a reptile upon which a Greek letter was based, an antelope that's able to survive without water, a lizard with a dreadful maw, a sly fish, and much more. Smart Pizza's with you. In this episode, you'll see the most interesting creatures that surprised everybody. The Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world, with an area of about 3.6 million square miles. Of course, it's impossible not to make amazing discoveries in such crazy territory. So, in 2022, a group of scientists from the States found there a number of unusual remains. They were first taken for the remains of an ancient creature and then for someone else unknown to science. Fortunately for people, researchers had a supercomputer at their disposal. It helped them restore the approximate appearance of the monster in life. What did it turn out to be? See for yourself. Do you think this creature could have lived on the same planet as us? Or was the artificial intelligence wrong? Write in the comments. Saharan Horned Viper Fortunately, we don't have to guess how real the following creature is. Everyone already knows that the Horned Viper is real. It's such an unusual sandy yellow snake, two to two and a half feet long. As you understand, it has one distinctive feature in the form of horns. By the way, we've known about this snake for quite a long time. According to the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, the ancient Egyptians treated the horned viper with great reverence and even embalmed the bodies of dead snakes. Some excavations in Egypt confirm this theory. The corresponding bodies were indeed found. In addition, it's believed that the snake is the basis for one of the letters of the Greek alphabet, phi. Allegedly, the reason for this was the ability of horned vipers to make hissing sounds with the help of side scales. Speaking of scales, horned vipers need them for something else. But before that, it's important to say that these snakes are active mainly only at night. It's quite strange, as it seems at first glance, their camouflage coloration is amazing. Thus, it's not easier to distinguish it in the daytime. Apparently, it's not quite so. And even when the horned viper is found, it's the very side scales that help it. The snake vigorously rubs one part of its body against the other, so the lateral scales cling to each other and produce a loud hissing sound. It can last for almost two minutes continuously. This is more than enough for another predator who noticed the snake, got disinterested in it, and went further on its way. Although even if the one who stays and wants to take your chances, no problem. Venom is still considered a worthy argument in favor of the horned viper. It's said that after the bite of this snake, there's a feeling that the heart clenches an invisible fist. But the main thing is not to be frightened. The poison is not fatal. After all, even the Egyptians, several thousand years ago, learned to cope with it, let alone modern medicine. Sand Fox That's the name of our next guest we're going to talk about. And yes, foxes can live in deserts too. The sand fox, for example, is found in the Sahara Desert from Morocco and Tunisia to Egypt and Somalia. Outwardly, of course, she doesn't look much like its classic brethren. As a juvenile, it strongly resembles the fennec fox. However, adults change a lot. Yes, and genetically, they're closer to red foxes, despite their congenital protruding ears and practically deserted habitat. But come on, let's return exactly to the tricks of the sand fox, helping it get along in the deserts. And the first feature is, of course, large ears. They're necessary for this fox not to hear better, as it may seem at first glance, but to cool itself in the heat. It's a pretty effective defense against overheating that even elephants have adopted. Warm blood travels over the large surface area of the ears, whereas a breeze cools it down. Sand foxes also have special pads on their feet that protect their limbs from overheating while walking on hot sand. As for water, sand foxes, like fennex, can do without it for a long time. The moisture they get from their prey is more than enough for them. Food, too, is not something particularly important to them. They eat almost anything in sight, even plant food, providing an additional source of moisture. Foxes hunt, as most do, under the cover of night when the heat subsides a little. And in between, they rest in small but cozy dens. As a rule, they have space for only one fox. For some, the fact that the sand fox almost never drinks may seem very surprising. How is it that it takes the necessary moisture from plants or food and hardly touches water? However, you must believe that it looks more natural if we take into account the fact the Ariel gazelle does not drink at all. 
these cloven hoofed animals from the desert can actually not drink at all in their entire life and feel great. And the main thing here is not to get confused. It doesn't mean that all these small antelopes all over the world do without water. In fact, if they find even a small puddle, they will certainly take a couple of sips. However, if such luck does not turn up, it's not a problem. All the necessary moisture for 100% they can get strictly from plants. For this purpose, they have to eat breakfast before sunrise in order to have time to swallow plants covered with invigorating cool dew. They also consume succulents and other vegetation that stores moisture for a rainy day. And if someone now thinks that they barely live days with so little water in their body, know that this gazelle can easily find the strength to accelerate up to about 50 to 55 miles per hour. This can make it difficult to catch it even for the most experienced predators. By the way, they're one of the few animals in Africa that can outrun a cheetah. Toad-headed agama Right, now we've got the toad-headed agama. This is a lizard that lives in deserts and semi-deserts from southern Russia to Iran and China. I'll tell you right away, living in its conditions is not the most pleasant thing. However, it can cope easily even with them. This creature took a different path and decided not to hide during the day like everyone else, coming out to hunt only under the cover of night. On the contrary, she chose to hunt right in the middle of the day, and I think I know why. For one thing, it can run quite fast, so it's not easy to catch up with this reptile. By the way, we can add a unique camouflage. However, even if its enemy turns out to be too attentive and still recognizes her opponent among the sand, no problem. The toad-headed agama will turn his head with its bright pink maw. The huge mouth and the swelling, vague silhouette of unknown dimensions cause confused thoughts in the enemy's mind like, wait, what if it's not a small lizard but some large predator that I can't fully see? And while your opponent's doing the math, the eared lizard throws dust into his eyes and runs far away. By the way, here's a fun fact. Earlier people thought that these lizards use exactly the same method to communicate with each other. However, it turned out that everything is not so. They use their tail for this purpose, the diametrically opposite part of the body. Twisting and untwisting, stomping and posing, the dialogues of these reptiles sometimes looks like a dance battle. Longfin Batfish Our next guest is called Playtex. The main thing is that it does not change the essence of the story. In any case, we're facing a representative of ray-finned fishes. You know, sometimes it seems to me that before an animal comes to Earth, Mother Nature tells this. The main thing here is to survive and continue the line, and how you're going to do that is up to you. Either use an existing template and become one of the popular creatures, or come up with your own tricks yourself. And the longfin batfish decided to get creative. The youth of this species doesn't look much like a fish. Rather, it's a blob of black with an orange border. Because of this coloration, it attracts the attention of predators even among the colorful underwater reefs of the western Pacific Ocean. However, that's the whole cunning plan. Playtex pretends to be a poisonous flatworm. And what surprised me the most? The plan works. Reliable like a Swiss watch. Except there is one nuance. There are predators in the world who know how to neutralize the poison of worms, so Playtex doesn't seem to them someone dangerous. However, it's not a problem. If the creature's a little lucky and during its youth it doesn't meet anyone evil, it'll move to the next level, become much larger and grow a fin. Along with this, the Playtex will also change in terms of its behavior. It will sink to a depth of 65 feet and try to get together in a pack with similarly large brethren. The fact is that because of the size of the worm, disguise will no longer work. At the same time, the diet of fish will remain the same. Jellyfish, shrimp, crustaceans, in general, the real thing. Algae growing on coral reefs serve them as garnish. And our hero cannot eat only one thing. It must combine different types of food to stay healthy and survive. Palace's Long-Tongued Bat by the time you pronounce the name of this creature, you'll break your tongue several times. But come on, the main thing is that this is a very interesting creature, one you've never heard of before. And let's start with the fact that even despite the promising name, this palace's long-tongued bat, aka vampire, has no passion for blood. I'll tell you more, its diet consists of nothing but sugar. 
Two of its physiological traits are also related. The bat is as long as your index finger, but inside it's a sugar refinery. It's said to have one of the fastest metabolisms in the world. Despite the fact that the bat eats almost only sugar, it burns 50% of its fat stores every day. However, don't be so quick to envy it and think how great it would be if humans had the same metabolism. The thing is, if this bat doesn't eat on time, it can easily die. It needs something to put in its stomach all the time. And to avoid spending too much time on this, the animal came up with the idea of eating through his long tongue. As soon as the bat sees the nectar, its tongue fills with blood and grows in size. Not just a little, but up to 50%. Along with the tongue, special tubercules on it also increase in size. Between them, it appears a gap where it collects all the nectar licked from the flower. Thanks to the lobes, the bat drinks nectar with its tongue as if from a spoon. By the way, do you want to know something else interesting about these bats? It relates to their landing process in the caves where they rest. Do you know how they land? Through evolution, they've developed a two-touch tactic. The bat flies perpendicularly to the ceiling, then does a somersault and flips headlong. In a split second, it clings to the ledge with its two hind legs, and the trick is considered perfectly executed. Incidentally, it's in this upside-down position that bats give birth to their offspring. Kiwi It's not difficult to guess that now we will talk not about a fruit known to us all, but about some representative of fauna. And yes, it is. It seems that this is some kind of a land animal. However, this is not the case. We can see a bird in front of us. The bird with incredibly strong legs. We'll talk about this a little later. Let's start with the fact that the kiwi's closest relative was thought to be the moa. However, the research done in the early 2000s, based on DNA comparisons, show that these birds are genetically closer to emus and cassowaries than to ostriches, rheas, and moas. As far as I'm concerned, I always get a rather odd feeling when I refer to the kiwi as a bird. Let's look at its feathers. Yes, it's essentially them. Nevertheless, its feathers have been so transformed that they now look more like wool, don't they? The fashionable furry look helps birds keep their body temperature constant at 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Although other birds, the same chickens or ducks, feel more or less well only at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. But the differences do not end with external factors alone. Inside, things are different from other birds. The kiwi weighs from 3 to 8.5 pounds, and most of the weight goes to the legs. All normal birds have relatively light legs, so that flying is much easier. The kiwi is exclusively pedestrian. So it made its structure compact and filled it with bone marrow, just like mammals. Well, so as not to be pecked by its brethren from indignation, the bird has chosen a nocturnal way of life to be seen as little as possible. Kiwis go hunting about 30 minutes after sunset. Their food consists of insects, mollusks, and earthworms, as well as fallen berries and other fruits. However, don't think that the kiwi is a peaceful and kind inhabitant. If someone sets foot in its territory, the stranger will be very unhappy. The kiwi has a lot of aggression. Star-nosed mole I don't know what I admire more, kiwi legs or the nose of this bird, the star-nosed mole. I suggest that we get acquainted with this unusual animal and make our own conclusions. So, the star-nosed animal is a mammal of the family Talpidae. The size of it will not surprise anyone. Their baby usually does not exceed four inches. However, even despite this, its appearance is attractive, to put it mildly. 22 outgrowths at the tip of the face stick out like fingers of very short hands. In fact, they do the same work. They grope all around with the help of Imer's organs. These are microscopic pads with nerve endings. Thanks to them, even the faintest vibration will be felt. This is also a special structure of the brain that compensates for blindness. Three areas at once are responsible for touching and occupy half of the entire cortex. So the mole can see with its nose, and I wouldn't say the eyesight's that bad. For example, it takes the creature only about 200 milliseconds to determine whether the object in front of it is edible or not. It seems that this feature is so unique that the mole should be just like everyone else other than that. But no, it went further and settled in the swamps. What's most interesting here, its tunnels always lead to water where the nearsighted animal feels quite confident. 
The same auxiliary organ allows it to hunt even small fish and mollusks, and it happens thanks to the sense of smell. Star-nosed moles create underwater air bubbles. In their turn, they pick up odors around. The unusual mole inhales the bubbles and feels everything as if it were not underwater but on land. At the same time, the animal hunts calmly even in this environment. Well, now let's move on to more real, though not less amazing creatures discovered by humans. The first of these was found near the Antarctic. The animal looks scary on the photo. Anyway, they named it after strawberries. That's quite the beauty of it. What next? No matter how terrible the creature is, you give it a cute name and everything changes immediately. Here's a life hack how to deal with fears. This monster has 20 arms and some of them are reminiscent of long feathers. At first sight, it looks more like an alien than a favorite berry. However, if you give it a second glance and turn your imagination at full throttle, you can see strawberries here too. The hands of this creature are attached to a small bump. It resembles the shape and size of a berry. So what is it? A real alien? Don't worry, no alien life has been officially recorded by humans. This creature has been classified as a species of a new sea lily. Whatever the previous creature could be considered a sea lily, after all, the shape of these creatures is familiar to us earthlings. But what do you make of this creature? Personally, at first sight, it reminded me of some alien ship or something very similar to it. This strange object was found in the Gulf of Mexico. We found weird and frightening creatures there before. However, this one definitely tops the list. The way it moves along the seabed or swims, the way it looks, all this complements each other and creates not the most pleasant sensations. Yet to scientists, it somehow resembles both a squid and a nautilus. Its tentacles are twisted in such a way that they bristle in different directions. Using a remote-controlled submarine, scientists managed to film the animal from different angles to get a better look at it, so they hoped to determine what species it still belongs to but failed. The researchers agreed it was too early to tell what the monster was. The science had never seen anything like it before. Therefore, they plan to locate its habitat and explore it for a while. However deep under the water you look, you always meet someone new and super weird like an alien. I mean, all the creatures we don't know seem to be from other planets. The same as with these ones. The American scientists have spotted something beneath the waves that looks like a balloon. It was off the coast of Puerto Rico. Specialists dived to the bottom and found a strange guest. Of course, there was information about it in neither encyclopedia nor in any closed source. However, thanks to the high resolution of the video, the scientists managed to show the creature from all sides in exquisite detail. Based on this, they published their article. The researchers were also able to determine the type of marine organisms the discovered species belonged to. They were not 100% sure, of course, but nevertheless. Presumptively, the scientists met comb bearers on the bottom. Those were common sea creatures provided by peculiar combs with special cilia they use in swimming. These are the largest creatures that move with the help of cilia. Their size varies from a few millimeters to five feet. Their body consists of something like jelly, but the creatures have nothing to do with jellyfish. They're carnivorous and feed on arthropods as well as all sorts of marine organisms' larvae. The newly discovered species lives at extreme depths of about two and a half miles. It's probably why its movement style resembles a balloon. To study this rare specimen properly, it would be great to move it to the laboratory somewhere on land. At the same time, the deep sea monsters die very quickly on the surface. Therefore, it's still unknown how to study them. You can say, what would a scary creatures edition be like without the Loch Ness Monster? I won't talk about Nessie. That sounds hackneyed and uninteresting. However, I'll be glad to show you this unusual monster washed ashore in the United States. The mysterious beast was found early in the morning near the shores of one of the local reserves. Some hungry heron pecked its breathless corpse. People chased away the bird and left the monster almost untouched to be studied by experts. As it turned out later, the monster was on the shore for a reason. Its body was found somewhere far out at sea. Father and son went fishing. No sooner had they come home than they noticed this strange creature. They became incredibly curious about who it was. Maybe it was still possible to help the poor thing. They swam closer and lost their tongues. The animal didn't look like any sea creature they knew. 
so they took it aboard without a second thought and moved closer to people. The two believed it would be a new scientific discovery. Well, they definitely get five points for the initiative, but only time will tell if this action is beneficial to society. So far, the monster has been taken under strict control in one of the laboratories, and research data is not disclosed. Perhaps it was someone like the Loch Ness Monster. An almost identical case occurred in the Montauk area of the United States. In the summer of 2008, residents of a New York village were shocked by a discovery made by a random resident. He found a bloated and bloodless creature that no one could identify. The creature was immediately dubbed the Montauk Monster. However, no sooner had they discussed it than the creature mysteriously disappeared. Some people just supposed it was some kind of mutant, the result of a failed government experiment. Others claimed it was an incomprehensible alien broken by the power of Earth. Still, others were convinced all that it was a fake, as there was no such monsters in the nature. Be that as it may, the supporters of conspiracy theories all over the world activated their forces and wanted to learn more about the discovery. Getting on the first plane, they arrived in Montauk. On arrival, those interested ran to the destination according to what the eyewitnesses pointed out in the letter. However, there was no one there. Either the authorities instantly covered their tracks or it was a fake. It could also happen that somebody else was first to come there. I wonder if I'm the only one who doesn't understand why such people leave the place of discovery. Or it's exactly that there's no coverage and no communication on the spot. Or it's the case that they have urgent business. In short, write in the comments, what do you think about these findings? The next unknown creature we're going to talk about has many official names. They call it the Panama Monster, the Panama E.T., the Blue Stream Monster, and even the Blue Hill Terror. But why is there so much hype about a certain creature? Well, it's because the monster was discovered back in 2009. It was the time when such findings were incredibly rare. Therefore, this case provoked wide discussion in society and reached almost every resident of the city as well as all those in the area. According to a legend, it was found by three or four teenagers not more than 16 years old. The boys were playing near the lake when suddenly this monster came towards them. At that moment, according to their own story, it was still alive. Trembling for their health, the boys teamed up and started pelting it with stones and sticks. Then they threw the carcass closer to the water. Later, the children came back, photographed the body, and sent the picture to a local magazine. The photo immediately caused panic among the locals, as the guys were unlikely to have set it all up so clearly and plausibly, so that nobody of them was at odds with the others, and so that the footage they provided was 100% authentic. And now you're probably thinking to yourself that these scientists and police officers got there next and the body was gone. Nothing of this kind. Imagine the body remained on the spot and was relatively fresh. It was taken to the lab to perform an autopsy and a series of DNA tests. It was only after several experiments when the researchers came to a definite conclusion. It was not an alien, but a male brown sloth. His hairlessness was most likely caused by the fact that the creature had spent a lot of time underwater. As a result, its skin became smooth and confused the guys that took it for some alien. Chupacabra is one of the most famous characters of urban legends. That sounds cool and interesting at the same time. However, when you find out that this monster is found in real life, you start feeling uncomfortable. If you were wondering, this small creature with an elongated face and oblong body has sharp teeth and claws. What's more, it's the owner of tough fur or scales on the body. Along with this, the monster attacks people or their livestock and sucks as much blood as needed. In a nutshell, you better not engage into a fight with Chupacabra. Nothing good will come of it. Despite this, sometimes people are helpless. The fate leaves them no choice and grants a meeting with Chupacabra. Life seems to, on purpose, bring us together with mysterious monsters, as if preparing us for something terrible. That's what happened in this story when such a frightening body was found in New York. A naked creature with a disfigured muzzle and hind legs, looking like human limbs, was found near one of the rivers. You must agree it didn't bear any resemblance to a pig. These mutants' teeth alone say a lot. Who could it be? By all odds, the creature resembles Chupacabra. However, if you have your own versions on this score, write them in the comments. The following story traces its roots to the coastline of North Carolina. 
when a local fisherman was coming back home. The man thought that day would be one of the unluckiest for him because the catch was not enough. The mood also bad, the weather cold. Suddenly, everything changed dramatically thanks to an unknown guest. A few meters from the boat, a man filmed a strange creature. At first, the fisherman thought it was an alligator. At least its muzzle shape was very similar to the predator. But when the man watched the footage, he realized it was something hardly known to humans. The monster had an excessively streamlined body, knew its way around its tail, and was able to dive in a way that crocodiles or alligators could not. At the same time, the creature was very long and powerful. No matter how active the discussion in the comments under this video is, no one has come to a firm conclusion, not even the scientists who entered the dispute. The same can't be said for termination of the incident when people found a certain ghost near the Mariana Trench. Scientists know that at the bottom and in the area of this trench, a whole variety of unknown creatures can be found. That's the reason why in 2016 they went exactly there and managed to find this ghost. The scientists who operated the bathscape did not understand first what a creature that was. They were a little shocked. But after arriving at the base, they were explained it was most likely that they'd seen rare fish from the Ephenidae family. The scientific catalogs described it only based on the captured or dead specimens. No one had ever seen it in its natural habitat before. This radiant fish from the Ephonidae family, like other representatives of the detachment, lives at depths of up to 6,000 meters. Its narrow 10-centimeter body with a small head is covered with transparent skin and lacks scales. No one knows how this tiny fish manages to cope with such impressive pressure deeply under the water. Now I'll tell you about incredibly muscular and large animals. Belgian Blue Cows of this particular breed are currently very popular in Germany, France, and Belgium. What's unusual about them? Well, for one thing, their appearance. These creatures do not look like an average cow that we're all used to seeing. This breed is noticeably different from the others with its build, which is a bag of muscles, as well as great milk yield. The Belgian blue cow usually reaches 5 feet in height, weighs over a ton, and its milk yield is equal to 530 to 1190 gallons per year. But how could such an unusual beef cattle breed appear? It turns out that its history dates back to the 18th century, when representatives of the meat shorthorn breed were specially brought to Belgium from England to improve local livestock. According to some reports, the Charolais cattle could also be involved in the mixing of genes. I'm getting ahead of myself and answering the main question on everyone's mind. What should have been mixed to make this? I'll say, it was enough to turn off the production of myostatin. For clarity, every muscle in the body of cows produces the protein called myostatin, and the higher the concentration of the protein in the blood, the less desire of the body to build muscle. And if there's no myostatin, the muscles themselves begin to grow with incredible speed and efficiency, beating even the best training programs of jocks. The downside for farmers, of which I think there are only a few here, is the need for constant feeding. Fortunately, simple fodder will be more than enough, and nothing extraordinary will have to be invented. The cow's stomach takes literally all the juices from the plants. Also, because the Belgian blue has almost no fat, it gets very cold so it's important to provide it with good living conditions. Another farm jock is called the Scottish Highland Cow, or just the Highland, and it's been known to people for over a hundred years. The cow looks like some kind of cartoon character. It's too muscular, stocky, and funny at the same time. The Highland has managed to build its muscles so that it walks incredible distances in search of food. Highland owners do not build large-scale barns, the cows are free-range and graze in the open. Because of the incredible coats that Highlands wear, people can often be unprepared for this kind of decoration. People unfamiliar with animal husbandry often mistake these cows for yaks or buffaloes, but they're real cows. It's just that the high-altitude climate is quite harsh and changeable where they come from. A thick, two-layer fur coat protects the animals, not only from the cold, but also from the piercing, damp wind. That's why they could forget about getting subcutaneous fat. There was simply no need for it. 
But despite the high muscle content and minimal fat, the Scottish cow will eat anything that a normal cow would turn away from in a heartbeat. Its digestive system can easily digest everything from coarse fiber to weeds and tough shrubs. However, oddly enough, artificial feeds are an exception. The highland will not eat them under any circumstances. What about milk yield? In a year, such a cow surely gives a lot of milk, doesn't it? This isn't the case. A farmer will get a little more than 400 gallons of delicious milk. Daily milk yields are out of the question. Despite this, resourceful farmers have still figured out where to use Highlanders. With their constant jogging, heavy weight and strong horns, these cows plow the land perfectly so that vegetation doesn't grow for a long time afterwards. Muscular Hogs There is a short but curious story about these creatures. About 10 years ago, Lang Yi, a Chinese farmer from a small village in Wangji province, found two piglets high up in the mountains. The farmer decided to capture them and bring them back to the farm. At first, they looked more than ordinary. They didn't stand out. But once he started feeding and caring for them, the miniature piglets immediately turned into healthy, muscular hogs, the mere sight of which makes you shiver. And indeed, just look at these pigs. They're so powerful and even creepy that they could easily become antagonists in some Hollywood horror movie. And most surprisingly, they have grown not only due to fat, but also due to muscles and to a greater extent thanks to them. Legs, torso, neck, wherever you look, all parts of the body are incredibly strong and ready for any physical exertion. It's not clear exactly what caused the pigs to transform this way. Either this is their peculiarity, or just in the mountains there's a muscular species that the farmer accidentally stumbled upon. Write in the comments, what do you think about them? Brahma Would any of you believe me if I told you that in the past, roosters of this breed weighed as much as 15 pounds? Those birds were gorgeous, but today's Brahmas are a little different. First of all, they're famous for their immunity. Brahma chickens have great health since birth, which, with proper care, preserves in them until the end of their days. Also, despite their extraordinary appearance and a whole bag of muscles, which is not typical of other breeds of chickens, Brahmas are unpretentious to the living conditions. In fact, they're not much different from ordinary domestic chickens. Of the joys for farmers, it's safe to say that the meat is perfect. Some consider it too tough and dense, but in most cases, the meat is tasty and its toughness is not a big problem. As for eggs, although this breed does not focus on laying eggs consistently, they do lay quite a few eggs a year. Most farmers turn a blind eye to the slightly lower production numbers because they like the look of these chickens the most. They want these strong, confident, and self-sufficient creatures to walk around their farm. Now I'll tell you about boar goats a breed of meat goat that occupies an important place in modern cattle breeding. They're considered one of the most popular among other goat breeds of this direction. These are animals that are not common in agriculture, but have managed to show great productive numbers. The first thing that can be distinguished in them is their appearance. An adult goat can weigh more than 287 pounds, which is above average. Along with this, its weight consists not of fat, but of muscles and a wide chest. However, the wool is short and there's very little milk. But this is of little concern to anyone because the breed is a meat breed. Although I would even say it's too meaty. From the moment of birth, a baby goat has time to gain 79 pounds of weight in just 90 days. The only downside is that the farmer has to be prepared to spend a lot of money on food. Since the weight gain is so fast, the food has to come in at a faster rate. But there are also positive aspects. The goat units clear their own pastures. The animals eat the leaves of bushes and small trees, after which they dry up. Gorillas are not farm animals like all the previous ones, but they also deserve our attention. Not for nothing are they considered the largest and strongest primates in the world. The average gorilla is stronger than any of the modern weightlifting champions of the world, and they do not even make an effort to train but sleep most of the day. You know what the scientists say? It's as simple and easy as ever. 
It's evolution. Most often, they write that the strength and capabilities of the gorillas are 10 times greater than its weight. That is, the average primate, weighing 400 pounds, is able to lift a load weighing 4,000 pounds. Maybe this is an exaggeration, but there's no doubt the gorillas are really very strong. It seems that Mother Nature put all its time and effort into creating such an unusual animal. But besides that, gorillas surprise us with their running speed. The creatures are able to move at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. It's hard to say how cool it is compared to humans because no one has organized a competition between gorillas and us, but I think we would definitely lose to them. Like I said, the secret of their power is evolution. The primates themselves do nothing about it. Even their diet's very simple. Grass and that's it. Well, they may occasionally eat clay to replenish their mineral reserves. That's the end of the variety. Although, maybe it's not about the food itself, but about how much they eat. After all, it's known that gorillas can eat up to 66 pounds of vegetation a day. African Elephant Elephants are positive guys. At least, that's how they seem to us. They look peaceful and have never been heard of any aggression towards people. Unless annoying tourists interfere in their family affairs, of course. But did you know that you should still be afraid of them? For example, the first argument that elephants are not so harmless is their teeth. They don't have many, but it's not about quantity, it's about quality. First of all, tusks are modified teeth. They grow throughout the elephant's life and can weigh up to 330 pounds by the time the animal's old. This animal has four or six molars in its mouth, each of which is a giant plate that it uses to grind plants. By the way, the animals die often due to the fact that with age, their teeth become unusable and they can no longer chew food well enough. These powerful creatures grow all their lives, so it's easy to determine the approximate age of an elephant. The larger the body, the older the animal. The average weight of an adult is 3 to 5 tons, but some old creatures weigh 12 tons. And here's another interesting fact. They can stand and walk within an hour of birth. Just like us, they can be right-handed or left-handed. Only in their case, it's not about their legs, but about their tusks. Elephants produce offspring every five years and can communicate with each other at a distance of three miles. For the latter, they use a low-frequency range known as infrasound, which is not perceived by our ears. By the way, speaking of big animals, I'll tell you why zebras are more dangerous than you thought. It's one thing to run away from predators and quite another to attack them. Zebras are very dangerous and reckless creatures. Sometimes they can even attack fast cheetahs. See for yourself. A family of cheetahs happened to be near the zebras and the striped ones decided to chase them away. At first, the cheetahs scared off the zebras themselves, but then one of them chased them and already the cats had to run away and hide. A few more seconds passed and the cheetah started to run away from the pushy zebra. Even when the video ends, the chase continues. Do you think the zebras caught up with the cheetahs, or did the super speed of these spotted cats save them? Share your thoughts in the comments. Congeners Zebras are dangerous, not only for various predators and herbivores of Africa, but also for their congeners. They often have fights with each other. The first of them is especially tough because here an adult zebra attacked a foal. It gripped the baby and began to mockingly hold it. It bites the baby and even tries to drown it. The foal breaks free, but the zebra grips it again. Next, the foal tries to escape across the pond, but the striped aggressor chases it and bites it back. The chase continues. The congeners are trying to calm the aggressor, but it no longer sees anyone but the baby. I hope it never managed to finish the foal off. But such situations do not happen often. Zebras are much more likely to sort things out with other adults. For example, here, two zebras decided to have a duel for supremacy in the harem. They bite, push, and kick each other. No one interferes, this is just their fight. However, it's unclear which zebra won here. As for me, it's a draw. Here, most likely, we see the same motive. Two zebras had a fight with each other because of a female or the right to own the harem. This fight is more spectacular. Zebras jump, not just bite and push each other. But the fight ended faster than the previous one. Again, it's not clear which zebra won and got the whole harem. You've learned and seen that zebras are not as harmless and kind as many people think they are. Their dark side is only a little of what one can tell about them. As the final part of this episode, I'll share a few more facts about these striped creatures. So keep watching, it'll be interesting.
species of zebras. It may seem that all zebras are the same, but they're not. This horse subgenus is subdivided into as many as three species, the common zebra, the grevis zebra, and the mountain zebra. The common zebra, also known as the plains zebra, is the most common, no pun intended. This is the zebra that everyone usually imagines in their head when it comes to zebras. It's also the most popular. For example, Marty from the Madagascar animated movie is exactly the common zebra. The grevis zebra is larger than the others. It has bigger ears and muzzle as well as a light-colored belly without stripes. And there are more stripes on the body itself. The mountain zebra also has no stripes on the belly, but it sure to have a crease on the neck. Of the three species, only the common zebra is out of danger, while the mountain zebra and the grevis zebra are endangered. Stripes Zebra stripes are their most distinctive feature distinctive in the truest sense of the word. The stripes of each zebra are as unique as human fingerprints. You'll never find two zebras with identical stripes. It's by the stripes that a baby zebra distinguishes its mother from other striped creatures. By the way, zebra stripes not only distinguish them from other African animals, but allow them to merge with the surrounding vegetation, reducing the risk of attack by colorblind predators. Plus, the stripes drive away many blood-sucking insects. Domestication Zebras are members of the horse or equus genus, but why then have humans never been able to domesticate them unlike ordinary horses? There are several reasons. First, because of regular contact with predators, zebras live in constant tension, which makes them nervous and aggressive. Such an animal is not suitable for domestication. Second, zebras have no social hierarchy. They gather in groups, but groups are not a social concept for them, but a survival technique. Third, the backs of zebras are not suitable for a person to ride on for a long time, let alone carry heavy loads. Zebras are smaller and weaker than horses. It's possible to train some individuals and make exotic horses out of them, but zebras as a subgenus cannot be completely domesticated. Migration And lastly, let's check out this beautiful footage of zebras migrating. The zebra migration in Botswana is the second largest wildlife migration in Africa after the Great Serengeti and Masai Mara migrations. Up to 50,000 animals participate in the migration. They overcome the challenges and travel about 310 miles from north to south and back. This is how they escape from the drought. Just look at this footage a little more. Now I'll tell you about the cutest cubs that you've never seen alive. Pangolins The name of these cuties translates from Malay as curling up into a ball. And really, in case you didn't know, they can do it as cool as no one else. When threatened, these animals curl up into a giant artichoke-like, completely impenetrable ball that only the largest cats like tigers or leopards can unroll. And even when they do, it usually doesn't end well because pangolins emit a foul-smelling liquid. Why is this ball so dense? It's because of the hard keratin scales that cover almost their entire body. The scales, which are up to 20% of their body mass, are mobile and their edges are pointed for extra protection. No other animal in the animal kingdom has such protection except the pangolin. The pangolin itself is of average size, its body length usually doesn't exceed 35 inches, and it weighs up to 77 pounds. In addition to the great defense, it's also able to attack because, not for nothing, Mother Nature has endowed it with long claws, suitable for ravaging anthills. Since birth, pangolins have poor eyesight, although in practice it doesn't prevent them from seeing. The point is that they're active mainly at night. Speaking of activity, have you realized what this animal looks like? Well, yes, of course, it's a copy of an anteater, only in armor and more advanced. And if you now think that they have a huge difference because of the tongue, then do not jump to conclusions. The pangolin also has something to surprise us. Its tongue runs through almost its entire body, and the huge muscles that power this doomsday machine are all along the length of its body, ending only at its butt. In addition to having a sticky tongue, this huge device also smells delicious. So when the pangolin drops into the burrow of termites or ants, they themselves run towards it instead of hiding in panic from the strange thing. It's funny, but when the pangolin is full, it decides to save the place that satiated it until the next day. 
To do this, it seals the entrance with saliva so no one can get out of there and returns in 24 hours. Also, this monster has teeth right in its stomach. They replace the teeth in its mouth. It seems that this is not the cute creature it was just a moment ago, but a full-fledged killing machine. But everything immediately changes when you cast your gaze upon a young pangolin. Their babies are just angels. They're born well-developed, but their scales are soft and harden only after a few days. The babies eat on their own after a month. At first, the babies cling to their mother and literally become its tail, observing and adopting the rules of life. Barn Owl and now let's talk about one incredibly interesting feathered creature that inhabits almost all continents except Antarctica. This bird has a bunch of features that are common to most owls. First of all, great eyesight. The barn owl is a nocturnal inhabitant, and all its main activities, including bloody massacres of frogs, reptiles, and vampires, well, I mean bats, take place under the cover of night. Because of this, these birds have completely lost their color vision but their black and white eyesight in the style of old movies is absolutely perfect. Spotting a tiny rodent at a distance of 3,000 plus feet somewhere among the bushes is as easy for them as it is for you to read the title of this episode right now. But that's not the end of their superpowers. For example, the barn owl has great hearing. Therefore, it will not only see a mouse in the distance, but also hear its heartbeat and even the presence of babies in its womb. It can do this for several reasons. The first is the shape of its head. The ears are not symmetrically located, which increases sensitivity and makes the sound more voluminous. By the way, here's a fun fact. If you look into the ear of a barn owl, you'll see the opposite side of the eye. It seems that they're cute and skillful creatures that do not need anyone's help, but this is not the case. For example, because of the strange shape of their legs, barn owls do not know how to build nests. They solve this problem very simply. They organize a raid and capture the nests of crows. That's why there are constant conflicts and battles between these two birds. Although, for me, to be honest, it's a bit surprising that crows give them a fight. After all, it's hard to even see barn owls. Their plumage is arranged in such a way that any air resistance is instantly damped by specially designed feathers, which makes the flight literally silent. But barn owl chicks deserve special attention in all the fuss and battle. They're born without knowledge of this terrible world, and that's why they look so beautiful. The hatched chicks are covered with thick white down and are completely dependent on their parents, which feed them alternately. After 35 to 45 days, the chicks begin to leave the nest, and after 50 to 55 days, they begin to fly. They become independent at the age of three months. Then they'll begin to live separately from their parents and feed on voles, rats, hamsters, and so on. Fossa. Something tells me that many of you are hearing about this amazing predatory mammal of the Malagasy mongooses family for the first time. The fossa is a mix of an otter, a mongoose, and a cougar, seasoned with the size of a spaniel. The animal hardly reaches 16 inches in height, with a body of 27 and a half to 31 and a half inches. Although it's not much by global standards, among Madagascar predators, it's quite a good value. Moreover, the creature is at the top of the food chain. Once upon a time, these creatures could reach the size of a modern lion, but unfortunately for the fossa, humans got in the way. They reduced the population of lemurs and indirectly influenced the development of the Malagasy mongooses, because lemurs were the basis of their diet. The principle of their reproduction or rather their mating games, deserve special attention. They look as follows. The female, realizing that it's ready for reproduction, climbs to the top of the tree all alone and settles there neatly. Apparently, from the top of the tree, the smell spreads much better. So, very soon, the males will gather under it and start fighting. As you can imagine, the winner will get the female, or rather the opportunity to mate with it. After that, the female will not need the male at all, and it will be happy to bring up the baby all alone. It will take care of this cutie and teach it all its secrets, the main of which, of course, is the skill of climbing trees. On trees, the fossa feels like a fish in water, and it's actually not that obvious because the fossa has clubfoot. Sifakis These primates are found exclusively on the island of Madagascar. 
They're very similar to us humans in literally everything except height. They walk upright, they have similar proportions, and they have tenacious fingers. But this is one of those cases where such similarities are just a common coincidence and nothing more. The fact is that Sifakis shared a common ancestor with us. Even the small similarities that we have with each other come from a similar way of life. But don't get too upset. What's wrong with these primates living on their own? Look at how much fun they're having. With the dawn, a group of primates climbing higher begins their day with a sun bath to praise the sun and warm up after a cool night. Having saturated themselves with the energy of the sun, the primates quickly cluster together and go in search of something full of calories. They go either through the trees, which is the classic method, or on the ground dancing. This, by the way, is their usual type of walking, which looks insanely funny to us. The chief in the Sifaka tribe is not a dominant male, as we're used to seeing in gorillas and other creatures, but an adult and experienced female. Simply put, the grandmother. It knows better which path to take and which not to take, where it's dangerous to search for food and where it's not. So everyone listens to it. Despite its advanced age, it jumps with the young on equal terms. Thanks to its powerful legs, it can jump even 26-foot gaps between trees. Although it's a pleasure to watch these creatures, science still doesn't know exactly how they reproduce. It's assumed that the babies are born within one year, the first half they spend in the mother's belly, and the second half they hang on it, tasting the fruits of its knowledge of life, as well as milk. Curiously, when the babies leave their parents, they will not rush to start their own family, as most other primates do. It'll be interesting for them to have fun in the open world without ties to commitments for two to three years, after which they'll begin to think about the formation of their clan. Lack of constant stress, high activity, and balanced diet have a positive effect on their life expectancy. Sifakas can live up to 25 years. What do you imagine a sea cow to look like? Well, it probably looks like a regular cow, but it swims underwater, right? Right, maybe that's how it would be in a cartoon, but in reality, a sea cow is this. The creature's name is manatee, and on average it weighs 1,100 pounds and is up to 10 feet long. Why did I pay attention to the size right away? Because it's really striking. Although the creature itself can surprise us with many other things, for example, manatees are herbivorous creatures that feed on aquatic vegetation, dwelling in shallow waters, as you understand you can't feed such a huge body with a couple of salads per day. So manatees have to eat from 110 to 154 pounds of greens daily. Therefore, in fact, their whole day consists of lunch breaks. In fact, many lazy people would envy their lives. After all, the sea cows either eat or play. They can play with their congeners and even with humans. They're not afraid of us at all and are happy to make contact with us. Unfortunately, one good company will not keep you warm. Manatees are extremely heat-loving animals. They freeze in water below 62.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why these chubby creatures constantly migrate in search of warm waters, gathering in herds of several dozens of individuals. But they're warmed not only by warm currents, but also by the very passions that are constantly running high in their communities. After all, a female can be simultaneously courted by up to 20 males. Whatever the case, and whichever the female chooses, it'll give birth to one baby weighing up to 66 pounds. The newborn will be under the care of the big mommy for up to two years. Of these one and a half years, the baby will be confined to the parent's armpit, but not for fun, but because that's where the nipple of the nursing mother is located. Sun Bear Remember this name, because this is the name of the smallest representative of the bear's family, which does not exceed 5 feet in length and weighs 143 pounds. Despite this, the sun bear is a rather stocky creature, characterized by high strength. No matter how you look at it, it's a bear. It lives in the tropical and subtropical forests of the foothills and mountains of Southeast Asia. It's well adapted to climbing trees and, being a nocturnal animal, often sleeps or sunbathes all day long somewhere in the branches, not far from its nest. Yes, yes, this bear builds its nest right on top of a pile of branches and leaves. The most suitable tree for such a nest is the Philippine mahogany. Halarctos, which is another name for the sun bear, hunts in a slightly unusual way. 
It has a long tongue. With it, it catches ants and termites without any problems. In addition to insects, the sun bear also eats small rodents, lizards, carrion, and does not hesitate to ravage banana plantations. But the basis is ants and termites, which you have to admit is incredibly strange for a bear. Personally, I was equally surprised by the fact that such large creatures have quite a fast pregnancy, which lasts about three months. Soon, these cuties will be born, and you'll want to take them home and take them under your wing. But don't do it. Keep your tenacious hands to yourself. These are very rare bears. Let them develop peacefully in the natural wild. The following animals of our episode are no less rare. Gelasino. This is the beautiful name given to a horse breed bred in Mexico in the early 16th century. The Galicino was brought to Latin America by the conquistador Hernán Cortés, who conquered Mexico in 1519. Despite the fact that Mexico was very close to the United States, in the States this breed of horse wasn't known until 1958. However, once news of the Galicino spread, an association for the breeding of these horses was established. These Mexican racehorses have gained much love and popularity in America. It's not only in their uniqueness, but also in their diminutive size. They're only about 130 centimeters tall and weigh about 300 kilograms. Many representatives of this breed are famous for their particular fast and smooth stride, so they're very comfortable for the rider. They probably inherited their smooth pace from the Spanish horses, their ancestors. These horses are excellent, but unfortunately very few. There are about 100 left in the world, which makes the Galicino the rarest horse breed on the planet. Whitebred Shorthorn Everyone knows that horses are often used in agriculture. Although I don't think the Galicino would be suitable for this task, such rare and unique creatures are worth preserving. Also, the Whitebred Shorthorn is not very suitable for farming, which is nevertheless sometimes used by farmers. The British Whitebred Shorthorn looks like an ordinary cow, but it's in fact a real unique animal. You won't find meat from these animals in grocery stores because they're extremely rare. Scientists believe that the number of white-bred shorthorn cattle is even smaller than the number of pandas. Scientists suggest that these white beauties are at risk and that they'll soon face complete extinction. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but who knows? Nature's pretty brutal. Burmese Chicken Chickens are another indispensable part of agriculture. You can find all kinds of chicken in grocery stores, but it's unlikely you'll ever cross a frozen Burmese chicken in your local supermarket. The Burmese chicken is probably the rarest breed of chicken on the planet. It's so rare and unusual that for a long time it was thought to be extinct. However, this information was later disproved. In the 1920s, several chickens were found in a small flock. Burmese chickens still exist today, though their population is critically small. The main feature of Burmese chickens is their very short legs. The birds themselves are not very big. They weigh about 500 to 600 grams. Though due to puffy plumage, they look larger than they really are. By the way, Burmese chickens are interesting not only because of their small number. This bird is one of the very few that was studied by the famous evolutionist Charles Darwin. He described these Burmese feathered creatures in his book, The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication. Danish Protest Pig Darwin did not write about these piggies, but they too deserve attention. They're the next farm animals in this episode that are incredibly rare. The Danish protest pig is such a rare breed that it's on the verge of extinction. But the breed itself is quite young, it's been bred for about 100 years, and it wasn't until 1954 that the Danish protest pig was officially recognized as a breed. The color of these pigs is very striking. Once you've seen it, you'll never confuse it with anything else. It's red with a broad white cross-section. Have you seen any other pigs like it? By the way, it's because of this appearance that the breed got its name. Researchers thought that the coloration of these pigs resembled the Danish flag. It's not only these pigs that are in trouble, but also many other animals on Earth. For example, dogs, which are about to become an extinct breed, the rabbit, which is almost impossible to find, and the species of porpoise, of which there are less than 10 left in the wild. Stay tuned to see these animals and learn lots of interesting facts about them. Dragon Lee No, Dragon Lee is not a rare species of reptile, as you might think. In fact, it's a breed of domestic cat. Of course, these cats are from China. Another name of the breed is the Chinese Li Hua. This breed comes from the Chinese mountain cat, which over the centuries has adapted to live with humans. The breed is indeed an ancient one, as the first mentions of these cats date back to the first millennium BC. Despite its popularity in China, this breed is considered rare. 
Dragon Lee cats are especially rare outside their homeland. As of 2017, there were only four purebred Dragon Lee cats in the United States, and that's in a country of about 330 million people. It's believed that it's virtually impossible to buy a purebred dragon outside of China, and in China itself, despite their popularity, these cats are not very numerous. At the same time, it's surprising that the cats themselves are quite ordinary. They don't differ much from the ordinary mongrel cats in appearance. What about dogs? There are many breeds among man's best friend, but the otter hound is certainly not one of them. They were bred in Britain in the 19th century. They were bred for hunting, so otter hounds have a strong body and long muscular legs, which allows them to withstand a lot of physical activity. Originally, they were extremely useful. These dogs hunted on otters that interfered with fishermen by eating their catch. The breed was doing very well until 1978, when England passed a law banning otter hunting. The otter hound switched to hunting mink and nutria, but this was no longer the case. Due to the loss of the main specialization, the breed became almost useless and its population began to decline rapidly. Now there are only about a thousand individuals left in the world, so the breed is considered endangered. Red Wolf Things are even worse with these distant relatives of the otter hound. The red wolf is a unique and very rare animal. Scientists call it the rarest member of the canine family. Once these wolves inhabited most of the eastern United States from Pennsylvania to Texas. In the 20th century, however, extermination and habitat destruction brought the red wolf to the brink of extinction. Their range first shrank to the far southwest of Louisiana and southeast Texas, and by the late 1970s, red wolves had finally disappeared from the wild, with only individuals surviving in zoos and kennels. The red wolf is listed in the Red Data Book as a critically endangered species. Since 1988, works to return red wolves to their natural habitat in the Great Smoky Mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee are underway. Things are progressing, but not fast enough. There are now only a few hundred individuals in the world. All the animals I've already told you about are very rare, but still not so rare that researchers cannot fully study them. The next animal from this episode is much rarer. So much so that only in 2021, scientists managed to interact with a live representative of this species for the first time. I'm talking about a Sumatran striped rabbit, an animal that lives on the Indonesian island of Sumatra at a high altitude above sea level. It was an accident. A male Sumatran striped rabbit was rescued by Indonesian animal advocates after it was accidentally discovered on Facebook. An anonymous user saw that the rabbit was about to be sold and contacted the National Park Authorities who tracked down the owner and seized the animal from him. As it turned out, the rabbit had been accidentally caught by a local farmer who encountered the animal on the edge of the national park near the river. After wildlife officials took the animal away, it was safely released back into the forest next to the camera traps placed there. They hope the cameras will help scientists learn more about the lifestyle of this rabbit. Now the rare striped animal will be monitored, which is great luck because until then the rabbit had only been studied from museum specimens and over the past 22 years, it had only been seen in the wild three times. Sumatran striped rabbits are poorly studied, but there is data on the following animal. This is the vaquita. Seeing it for the first time, you wouldn't realize that this is the animal that's considered the rarest in the world. The latest scientific estimate is that there are less than 10 vaquitas left in the world, although the reality may be even sadder. It's possible that there are only three or, for example, five individuals left. Until 1958, no one knew of the existence of the vaquita. The species was described that very year. Shortly thereafter, the vaquita population began to decline. The vaquitas were rapidly dying out, and illegal fishing in the Gulf of California was to blame. Authorities tried to remedy the situation and even banned the use of gill nets a few years ago, but it didn't do much. It was too late to take action. The point of no return has already been passed. So the vaquita is inevitably on its way to becoming the next extinct species. It's possible that dolphins will become extinct because the way they treat their young is frightening and alarming. From 1991 to 1993, Dr. Ben Wilson and Dr. Harry Ross studied the bodies of dolphins discarded on the northeast coast of Scotland. The study revealed a very unpleasant detail about the dolphins. After examining the bodies, Wilson and Ross found scratches, bite marks, and internal organ damage. Initially, scientists thought that the animals were caught under the screw of the ship or in a tight fishing net. 
but after examining the bodies more carefully, they came to the conclusion that such marks could only be left by the teeth of relatives of the dead animals. This meant only one thing. The dolphins washed ashore in Scotland were the victims of other dolphins. Of the 105 animal bodies studied, 42 had serious injuries caused by other dolphins. This suggests that dolphins do not just attack each other, but do it very often. Babies and Young Dolphins Still remember that female dolphins suffer from harassment? Well, the determined attempts of females to get rid of harassing dominant males may be a manifestation of another sinister truth about dolphins. Between 1996 and 1997, 37 young bottlenose dolphins were discarded on beaches in Virginia, USA. On cursory examination, they may have appeared fine, but autopsy revealed severe blunt force injury. Scientists found injury to the head, chest, fractures, contusions, and a number of other injuries. In addition, they found that adult dolphins were to blame for the deaths of the young. One scientist observed several behavioral events labeled baby tossing in coastal waters off Virginia Beach. Baby tossing is a way for adult males to get rid of unrelated and sometimes even related babies. Scientists believe there's a direct reason for this. After the birth of its offspring, the female loses interest in mating and concentrates entirely on taking care of the baby. Only the loss of a baby can revive the interest in mating, and it's this creepy way male dolphins use for their own purposes. Speaking of mating, there's another dark surprise in the mating behavior of dolphins that's been revealed relatively recently. In 2004, a study of heritability within a population of dolphins in Shark Bay revealed that these mammals occasionally practice sexual intercourse between kin. For example, scientists observed a male known as BJA. It became a father in 1978. Scientists estimate that 15 years later, in 1993, it mated with its own offspring. In addition, scientists later observed males grooming their mothers in a group of three partners. All this could be put down to exceptions to the rule or rare cases, but the statistics are disappointing. According to a study of scientists that was published in 2010, the incidence of incest in a particular population of dolphins is higher than a random value. This means that dolphins intentionally and regularly practice consanguineous intercourse. Every new fact and study about dolphins makes me feel more and more uncomfortable. Let's end this video with a less creepy detail about these sea creatures. This detail concerns the dolphin's smile. I'm sure you're all aware of the fact that dolphins smile kindly all the time. And if you've been to the oceanariums and all the performances with the dolphins, you've definitely seen the smiles of these mammals and all the details. You should know that dolphins don't actually smile. Although dolphins can be happy and sad, they don't possess human facial expressions. The muzzle of the majority of dolphin species is arranged in such a way that the lower jaw protrudes forward, and due to this it visually seems that the animal always has a wide smile. This feature makes dolphins cute and outwardly attractive. But in fact, an angry dolphin attacking a human will have exactly the same facial expression as one that entertains visitors at the dolphinarium. That's all, guys. Do you feel differently about dolphins after watching this video? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.